Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Give us a few more minutes. We're going to let a couple more people pop on and then we will get started. Okay, good morning again. We, I think we're going to go ahead and get started because we are right at 10. We don't have a ton to cover today, but it's really juicy stuff. So I think you guys will enjoy what we have for you. Just a quick reminder that everybody is muted right now. So if you do have a question, you can either raise your hand or I do have the little question comment box popped up. So if you have something that you'd rather type out, you can do that as well. Otherwise, I think we're going to get started. So today we are talking about Social Media Engagement 102. Last month, I think it was mostly really a month ago, oh my gosh, last month, we did Engagement 101, which was very brief, and I just kind of touched on what engagement was and, you know, why it was important, and today we're going to talk about how to increase your engagement, why it really, really is important etc. So if you, you don't you didn't need to attend the one last month, but if you did, it would be a good segue to this one. So I will cover again really quick what engagement is. In terms of social media, it's interacting with your friends, family, followers via comments and likes on their posts. So the likes do not equal engagement. I know a lot of people 
spend hours and hours on Facebook and Instagram and then they come to me and they're like, I am not getting engagement. Like I'm not getting, I don't feel like anybody's seeing my posts. And I'm like, well, are you commenting on posts? And they're like, no, I'm liking everything. I'm like, okay, well, that's why. So likes do not equal engagement in Facebook and Instagram's eyes. It's important to still do them, but if you're going to like a post, you need to comment as well. Um, Instagram and Facebook reward engagement. So the more you're engaging on the two platforms, the more comments you'll get, the better engagement you'll get, and the more people will see your post. So the more that, the more Facebook will push your post out further to your sphere. So you might have, you know, 1,200 friends on Facebook, and don't get me wrong, there are times that people can post something and it'll blow up, and that is not common for them, for their content, and that's kind of normal because there, there are trigger words, and I don't know all of them, but Facebook and Instagram both have trigger words. And then obviously if, if people start commenting on that post, Facebook will push it out more, it will push it out further. So, but on average, if you're not engaging on either platform and you're just posting to post and you're just liking to like and you're just kind of scrolling mindlessly through both platforms, and you have 1,200 friends, not all 1,200 people are going to see that post. So I get a lot of people that come and sit at my desk and they're like, I want to share all my listings because I've got 1,500 friends and somebody on that friends list is going to need this house. I'm like, well, that might be true, but not all 1,500 of those friends are going to see that post. So that's why, you know, when I when I tell you that you need to be posting more than once a day, I don't say that because I want to annoy you. I <laughs> say that because you're not going to hit all 1,200 of your friends with just one post a day. You need to spread out, you know, two or three posts a day. You're going to hit different people. And the more you're posting, the more active you are, which Facebook and Instagram will notice, as well as you engaging on the platform. So just a couple of those things to note. So how often? Um, you could probably get by with engaging once a day on either or both platforms. However, I'm pretty positive most of us are on Facebook or Instagram more than once a day. So if you're scrolling social media, it doesn't matter if this is your fifth time on social media today, if you're scrolling social media, you need to be doing it with intention. So if you're never engaging with your newsfeed, you're never going to increase your engagement, which means you're never going to widen your audience, you're never gonna get more eyes on your posts, et cetera. So it's a give and take. So you need to give a bunch of engagement to get a bunch of engagement back. So tailoring your post to get engagement. So this, I think, not only do we need to be giving engagement, and that's kind of the bulk of what this webinar was about, but you also need to get it as well. <laughs> so as long as you're still doing, you know, as long as you're still engaging with your network and your news feed, et cetera, you also need to be fixing your post to talk to your target audience. So you need to, they need to be relatable. So they need to have that me too or he, she gets me type effect. You need to have a call to action. And I know not all the time that you can provide that call to action in a post, it just doesn't make sense. But when you can, you need to put it in there. So asking a question in order to get a response back from them. So not just to get people to like that post, but you wanna get people to comment as well. And it's not easy to do. It's not, you know, you're not going to go, you're not going to leave this webinar today and put, you know, post, let's say you're going to post 10 times this week, so two times a day for five days, and you're going to put a call to action in every single post. You may or may not get a ton of engagement. It just might not happen right away for you, and that's okay because it takes time to build. But don't make your post all about you. Make it about, you know, your client or your customer or, you want to make them the hero or make them feel special in that post versus making it all about you. Um, if you have, if you've met with me before or you've taken any of my classes, you know that I have you guys write down um, the things that make you you, so your top five. So the five things that make you you, your hobbies, you know, your passions outside of real estate because, you know, we are more than just a real estate agent. We do have other things that we're interested in, and those are the types of things that people are going to connect with you on and relate with you on. So if one of those things that make you you 
our motivation and empowerment and inspiration. You like to, you know, motivate others or inspire others. If you tailor your post to meet to that, you know, that that one of your five. So if you make your post motivating and inspiring and empowering and that works for your audience, then keep posting that because you're going to notice that if you're speaking to your audience, your engagement will increase. Another thing that you can do is if you're telling a story, so for instance, let's say you're telling a story on um, why, your why. So why you do what you do, why you wake up every day and you do the real estate. That's, that's what you're writing about. So you want to take the juiciest part of that story or the climax to that story or the part that just makes that story the story. You want to move that to the front. So you have like three seconds to get somebody's attention when they're scrolling through Facebook, which is not very long. So you really have to have a good headline to that post. And you want to make it very catchy. So you want to you want to get people to stop scrolling and read, and then you want people to comment on that post as well. So that's just a tip. Sometimes, you know, not every post is going to have, you know, a juicy story in it, and that's okay. But if, it, if the one that you're doing in particular does, move that to the front of the post and see if that helps your engagement, because it might. It should. Um, if you aren't getting engagement, there are three reasons that you're probably not getting it. So you're either not engaging enough with your feed, you aren't leaving meaningful or good quality comments, or you aren't speaking to your audience, your posts aren't relating to anyone. So on Facebook, um, you when you do meet with me, I talk a lot about your marketing yourself and using your personal page versus your business page, and I do that on purpose. Um, I don't do that because I think a business page, in my opinion, for lack of a better word, sucks, but it really does. And that's because of Facebook's algorithm. And I say that word a lot to a lot of people, and I'm that's not written down anywhere. So Facebook or Instagram, neither one, have it written down that says, this is our algorithm, and this is how you can you know, work it to better benefit you. They're never going give to that, give that information to us, ever. So we kind of have to like play their game and figure it out. And then as soon as we figure it out, they change it again. It's like the cycle of Facebook and Instagram. But these days, Facebook is placing a lot more importance on that personal relationship. So building that relationship, being a professional friend maker, um, posting good quality content, and leaving meaningful interactions or comments. So it's going to be harder for your public post on your business page to be seen and it's going to be more important than ever to share your content that gets comments or share content to groups of friends via Messenger. So you want to be sharing your content on your personal page because that's just naturally going to get you more engagement than it will your business page unless you're paying to boost every single thing that you're posting on your business page, which isn't very, you know, realistic for every real estate agent. Obviously, if you have a business page, don't delete it because we never know when Facebook is going to change their mind and put a lot more emphasis on a business page. So we don't want your timestamp to go away if you've had it for a while or if you have it at all. Um, but as of right now, you're going to get more engagement on your personal page. And you're not going, and I get a lot of people that say, I'm not going to post on my personal page because I don't want to annoy my friends and family. Well, at the end of the day, who cares what they think? Because you are building a business on social media. So this Facebook is no longer Facebook or Instagram are no longer places to just keep your friends and family updated. You are on here to be you for you to build your business. And you're going to be posting valuable content. So it's not going to be annoying. So you're not going to be posting about real estate every single time, three times a day, seven days a week. You're going to be mixing in a lot more of your personal content. Um, you know, you can put some quotes in there, but it, but at the end of the day, it's going to be good value. It's going to be you're going to be providing good value to your circle, so it won't be annoying. So when you're commenting on Facebook, you're. I have five thousand friends on Facebook. I think. I think I just. I on Friday, I think I hit five thousand, and then I had to go back through and delete some. Because I, you constantly want to be expanding your network. You never want to stop expanding because then you stop 
getting new eyes on your post. So you never want to stop. Um, so when you hit that max, which is 5,000 on Facebook, you want to go back through and delete people that either aren't engaging with you or people that you've been friends with for, you know, 20 years who, you know, are not, you just don't talk to anymore. Or you don't think that they're going to help your business. You delete those. You remove them as friends. They don't get a notification for it. But it's going to help get more and new eyes on your post. So you're never going to hit all 5,000 of those people. I shouldn't say never. You might, but it's going to be very hard to hit 5,000 people. So I take all of my friends and put them in friend lists. I'm not going to walk through how to do that today, but we do have a step-by-step, -step, excuse me, we do have a step-by-step -step document that will show you how to create one and then how to access it after it's created. So Lisa will have that. I think I've shared that with you, and she will share it with the rest of the people that have signed up today to watch the webinar. So you can do that. But basically, it's creating categories. It's kind of like your back office. You're creating folders of all of your friends. And they're not notified that this happens. This is just for your records and your organization only. But let's say you have, let's just say, just to make math easy, you have 10 friends on Facebook. No, 50 friends on Facebook. And you have five lists. So you have 10 people in five different lists on Facebook. And they can be family, they can be college friends, they can be past clients, current clients, and a warm list. So let's say you have people that you're working on that just really aren't quite ready to get there. They're not quite, quite ready to sell or buy yet, but you know that they will be. So you put them all on a friends list, and then when you can pull that list up, it brings up a mini news feed of only those people in that list. And then you can go through those people and comment and like on their posts. So that'll help you when you are expanding your network. You throw everybody into these specific lists. And then that'll help you stay top of mind to as many people as possible. Um, so when you are commenting on posts, you need to try and do so with four plus words. Because that and Facebook, definitely on Instagram, for sure on Instagram, but on Facebook too. As we all know, Facebook owns Instagram. Um, leaving four plus words. So you're not just leaving emojis. You're not just leaving you know, things like so cute or ad adorable or happy anniversary. So you want to add more juicy, you want to add more content to your com comment. <laughs> so instead of saying, you know, somebody announces that they're pregnant, instead of saying congratulations, you want to say congratulations, I'm so happy for you. That'll be four plus words. So that's a more meaningful comment than just congratulations because everybody's going to say that. So you want to stand out a little bit and you want to leave a more meaningful comment. But you also want to read the post before commenting <laughs> because there might be times where people are sharing what seems to be a very happy, a happy picture of maybe their dog. Let's just say it's them and their dog and you don't read before commenting, and you comment that, oh my gosh, that dog is so cute. Um, you know, you just, leave a, you just leave a meaningful comment about that photo, but that photo, the post is actually about them maybe losing their dog, and it's not really that happy, so you want to, you would have tailored that comment to better match that post instead of saying, oh my gosh, he is so cute. You want, you want to just read, and be mindful of what they're trying to say before you comment. Um, and then on the flip side of that, if people are commenting on your post, you want to respond back, and you want to try to do that with four plus words if possible. And I know that's hard to do sometimes because let's just say that it's people are saying happy birthday, and all I mean usually all we say back is thank you, but you want to you want to switch those comments up. So if somebody writes on if 50 people write on your wall. Those are 50 comments that you need to be leaving. You have to respond back to everybody that's writing on your wall. I know it sounds tedious, but I promise you it helps your engagement. It makes you look more active in Facebook's eyes. So instead of just saying thank you, you can say thank you so much. You can find, you can go to their page and kind of find something personal to connect with them on. So maybe they just, maybe that was your client that you just closed with last week. You want to say, you know, thank you so much. How's the new house? So maybe you're creating a little bit of a conversation within a post with creating a little thread back and forth. So that's good as well. And then you want to think about the timing of your reply. 
So let's say you have 50 people who write on your wall for your birthday. You don't want to you don't want to comment back to all 50 of those people right away. You want to spread that out because or that's a bad example. Let's say you have a post that you made this morning and by noon you had 20 comments. And you're like, okay, I'm sitting down for lunch. I'm going to respond back to all of these people right now. If you do that right now, it's only going to boost that post once into other people's timelines. So you want to comment, like, if you have 20 comments, do five. And then an hour later, do another two. And then maybe five hours later, you finish them. Because that's going to boost, that's going to boost your, that's going to keep pushing your post up further on other people's timeline, so it's going to get seen more. So you don't want to throw all your cards on one ta at, on the table at one time and, and respond back to everybody, because then you're losing that potential of more people seeing that post, if that makes sense. So Instagram, so Instagram is a little bit harder to grow than Facebook. I shouldn't say a little bit, it really is. It's way harder to grow on Facebook because for instance, if you are adding, if you are following 10 people a day on Instagram, not all 10 of those people are going to follow you back every single day. It's just not going to happen. And on Facebook, if you friend 10 people and all 10 of those people accept your friend request, you're officially friends with 10, more, 10 new people on Facebook, and you're seeing their content. They're able to see your content, but that's not the way that Instagram works. So it's, it's a lot harder to grow. It's a lot more fun to grow, but it's harder. So, um, and in, I'm just going to read this to you guys, and then the link at the very bottom, if you wanted to go to that and read more, you can. So, an in-depth look at, look at Mention's Instagram engagement report in 2018 confirmed a common belief that video content on Instagram receives the highest average in, engagement rate, likes and comments, and that while fun and helpful in many ways, hashtags do not actually increase the engagement rate for posts. So, I semi-agree with this. That's why we put it in here, and then I like I'm like 50/50. So video content is obviously great on both platforms. You're going to get more engagement on that because Instagram is going to push that out further because they love video. Whether it's live, you can go live on Instagram and your stories, or whether it's just a video that you're posting in your feed. So video in general is huge on both platforms. However. I do think that you have to have hashtags in order to reach, okay, maybe not to increase your engagement, but in order to reach a higher audience, you have to have hashtags. And if you aren't public, hashtags don't matter. So if you're trying to increase your network or expand your network, and you're using hashtags, but your profile is private, hashtags aren't mattering because nobody can click that hashtag or look at that searchable hashtag and then find your post because you're private, unless they're following you. So hashtags are very, 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 very important to have. They might not increase your engagement, but they're going to increase, they're going to help increase your audience. So keep that in mind. This is my favorite thing that I've discovered lately. It's called the 360 rule. I think it's 360. My math might be off. But you're going, to, you're going to come up with 10 hashtags that fit your target audience. So in the real estate world, we want to think about just married because they're probably, they might be renting now. They might need to buy a house soon. Um, a new mom, new dad, new parents, newly married, Indianapolis blogger, Midwest mom. Um, so you want to come up with 10 hashtags that kind of fit your target audience or kind of fit people that you would want to work with or that might need a real estate agent in the future. You don't want to only look at people that are going to be profit makers for you. This is just for increasing your engagement on Instagram in hopes of getting a lead out of that eventually because you're going to be on you're going to be staying top of mind so so frequently that they're going to remember you. So it's kind of like a catch 22. So you may get a lead from this, but you also are doing this to increase your engagement and increase your audience. So you want to take 10 hashtags, and then you want to type that hashtag into Instagram and search for it. And then the top nine photos that show up, you're going to comment on those top nine photos, and you're going to comment with four plus words. 
or it won't count as engagement. So you're leaving, let's say, four words on nine photos on 10 hashtags, so 360, right? Is that, that's right, right? I think that math is right. It might be wrong, but I think it's right. And I'm telling you, it is a game changer. So if you do this every single night, you spend 30 minutes, Every single night, you look at those 10, same, the 10 hashtags every night, the same ones. You comment on the top nine. Now, sometimes those photos don't update. Like, sometimes there's not a, a new photo in that hashtag that somebody has posted. So I will go to the next nine, or I'll go to the re – there's a top, and then there's a recent. So then you can go to the recent tab and comment on those as well. But the top nine works the best. And it's a, I mean, it, your, your engagement will increase, your followers will increase, and you don't need to follow every single person back. You need to make sure that A, they're, you know, in the United States at least. They're not a spam account. It's an account that you wouldn't mind seeing their content every day, et cetera. Um, and then collections on Instagram. I don't have, I think I have a slide that will show you, that will walk you through how to do the collections on Instagram. I don't have a step-by-step. -step. I can get one probably. Probably not today, but I can do one for you guys. Uh, but it's basically like creating a friends list on Instagram. It's just a little bit different. The layout's a little bit different. You would be saving posts versus saving accounts, if that makes sense. But then you can go back into these collections of people that you want to make sure that you're fully staying top of mind with and then you can engage with their new post as well. So in closing, I just want to touch on a few things that I may or may not have mentioned, but these are the most important. So if you, do, if you got nothing out of this whole webinar, I want you to remember this slide. So engagement. So being a professional friend maker, leaving meaningful comments, being, you know, relatable in your posts. Don't hold message if you don't know what that is. That is friending somebody on Facebook that you've never met before and then immediately sending them a message saying, hey, I'm a real estate agent in the Carmel area. Do you know of anybody ready to buy or sell? Or are you ready to buy or sell? Don't do that because then you're just making that person a number and not making that person a friend. If somebody sends you a message on Facebook or Instagram when you're responding, try to use voice memo when you can just because that gets them to hear your voice and gets them to hear your excitement. And it just shows that you're a real person versus just responding back like a robot. Um, replying to Instagram and Facebook stories. So if you're not familiar with those, on Instagram, it's on your main page, and there's little bubbles at the very top of everybody's profile photo. And those are stories. And then on Facebook, you can access them through Messenger, I believe. And then you can watch people's stories on there. So you need to re be responding back to those. And that will help increase your engagement as well. You don't have to respond back on the stories with four or plus words. You just need to make sure that you're responding back because it gets you in their inbox. And then the more you're, you know, responding to their stories and the more you're commenting on their posts and their, in their feed, they're going to see you more, as, they're just going to see you a lot and you're going to be staying top of mind more. So when you post, they'll see it in their timeline, et cetera. Likes do not equal engagement. So if you're all you're doing is liking content on Facebook and Instagram, that's not helping you. Make sure you're leaving four plus word comments. And then increasing your engagement will take time. Don't give up. So if you post today at noon and – did I spell crickets right? Did you check that? Because sometimes I spell it like the, the craft <laughs> – the, the, the thing that you can get at Michael's to make things, I spell like that. But if you get crickets on your post, it's fine. So that just means you get no engagement. Crickets mean you it's silent, nobody's commenting, nobody's really liking your post. And that's okay. It could be, you know, a lot of different reasons. It could be time of day. It could be the content on that post. Um, it could be that Facebook released an update and it messed everything else up because it did that last week. Um and they never tell you when they're going to update or what they update. But when they do make an update, it definitely hurts your engagement for a while. And it'll take that time to build. It'll take time to build back up. But that's okay because you're still probably, people are probably still seeing that post. They're just not engaging on it. So don't give up. Keep going. Keep posting. And I promise you, if you do what I've told you to do, your engagement will increase. Do we have any questions? 
was fast. Was it fast? Yep, 20 minutes. Okay. You know where to find me for the next four weeks and four days. I will be here. So I won't have another webinar. I think we're done. I think you do the next one, right? Yeah. Um, our next Social Media Monday webinar is going to be May 10th. Or sorry, June 10th. It's already May. Um, oh, and um, you're going to be lucky that you're going to have a, uh, Christy and I, Lissa, doing that one with you because I'm um, freezing ready to go on maternity leave. Yeah, I'll be here, but I'm not quite sure my brain will be here. Right. So we're going to be talking more about Facebook friend lists and how to make them and how to use them. So um, join us for a good time next yeah. month. And then after that, I'll see you guys after 10 weeks. So I'll be going to have a baby. So if you have questions from now until then, please let me know. Um, obviously, I'm still doing agent one-on-ones until maternity leave, so if you need to get in with me for 30 minutes to an hour, let me know. I'm happy to do that. Otherwise, we'll see you guys later, and have a good week. Bye, guys.